Hi, I'm Ems, aka on Zack and Wings. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the Two Thin Coats range from Duncan Rhodes and giving my opinion on it. Please do like, comment, and subscribe, it all helps my small channel grow and gives me the motivation to keep making these videos. Transatlantic Games, the company who creates and distributes Two Thin Coats paints, sent me out a set of 60 from that particular range. There are two waves currently out of the Two Think Coats range with about 120 paints in total. There are 60 in wave one and 60 in wave two, but you can also buy these paints individually as well. There is a new wave three of these paints out now on Kickstarter, adding another 60 to the range, creating a total of 180. And you can also get wave one and wave two in this Kickstarter as well as part of bundles and you can get quite a great saving on them. And there's some additional like goals and things like that. I'll pop this in the link in the description below. The paints I was sent were from the wave two batch as far as I'm aware. And I wasn't paid by Tooth and Coats to promote these, nor was I under any obligation to talk about these paints. I just wanted to do a full review of them myself because I really enjoy working with paint as much as I do collecting miniatures. And I'm not encouraging you to go out and buy the full set and spend hundreds of pounds on the Kickstarters, but by the end of the video, if you think these are paints which are right for you, maybe just pick up a few and see where you go from there. I also want to try and give my honest, informed opinion with these paints. I own a lot of different brands and I really enjoy working with paint as I said. So it only seems fair to contrast and compare with other popular brands out there and see what I think compared to those. So all that waffle aside, but as I said I really wanted to get my statement out there of how I'm judging these paints. So here we have the Raygun Glow which is a beautiful vibrant colour. Before I even look at the paints themselves, I want to show you what they're like in the bottles. So these are only 15 milliliters per bottle, which is quite a lot lower than most average dropper bottle paints. And if you look at pro acrylic paints, these are 22 milliliters per bottle, and these are roughly about the same price range. Two Thin Coats is about £3.50, £3.60 online, and pro acrylic is about £3.80. And if you look at your standard paint like a Vallejo one, this is 70 milliliters, and those range from about £2.60, £2.80 per bottle online or most stores. So Vallejo are a lot cheaper per milliliter which you get. However, there are some cool features with the two thin coats paint, such as the nozzle where the paint comes out of the top. It doesn't clog up the same way as you get with a standard paint like Vallejo. Sometimes these can crust over and it's hard to get the paint out, so you have to clean these out, which can be quite messy. Pro Acrylic have tried to address this with these twist tops, which I think are really cool, and the paint doesn't clog the same. However, I do find that some of the paint kind of crusts over at the top, and these paints can get a little bit messy, in my opinion. So I do give props to Two Thin Coats for the design of the nozzles. They're very clean and they will stop clogging. The nozzle is also great on these paints as well because it limits the amount of paint that actually comes out and which you can put on your palette. Which I think is a great idea because I tend to find with miniature painting I waste quite a lot of paint. Especially if I'm only painting like one miniature at a time and I've got all this paint left on my palette and then sometimes it can be wasted. So this might actually be a good payoff in the long run considering that there is less paint in these bottles, however you might actually be using less of it at one time. The paint comes out of the bottle really nice, I shook it up a little bit but it's nice and consistent, it's not too thick or chalky or anything like that. They have a nice consistency right out of the bottle, say compared to scale 75 where you really have to shake those paints up and have to add quite a bit of water to them because they're quite heavy bodied. And the same with some of the Citadel Games Workshop paints, some of them are quite thick and gloopy so you really have to kind of work into those. So the two thin coats paints I'm just adding to this model which I've 3D printed here and I'm just going to test them out. I've had to add quite a bit of water to this paint to thin it down so it wasn't too thick and has a good flow to it. 
which isn't necessarily a bad thing because if paints are a little bit thicker and a bit more opaque it means you can work into them a bit more so you can keep adding more and more water to them to change around the consistency and also this brand is called Two Thin Coats so it's kind of going for that approach to painting where you have to thin them down and work into them more. I personally think I don't have to thin down the Pro Acrylic paints as much to get a good consistency with them and I think they have a bit more viscosity to them so I feel like they flow a bit better right out of the tube so I don't have to work into them too much. The two thin coats paints being a bit thicker isn't necessarily a bad thing because I've only got a little bit on my palette so that little bit of paint has stretched out quite a bit. And like I said, I can keep adding a bit more water to it and I can play around with it a bit more. And I don't have to be afraid about wasting too much paint, which is always a good thing. These paints feel like a good mix between like these high-end arty paints like Scale 75 and like cheaper paints like Vallejo. Because they're quite thick, but they still have a better consistency to them than Scale 75, like right out of the pot. So you don't have to work into them too much, but I still feel like I have to be aware about adding water to them and thinning them down compared to, say, pro acrylic paints. But these are super opaque paints. They cover really well. And I don't feel like I'm getting any separation in these at all. They feel like almost like, you know, like a pure pigment paint, like a Chimera, but without that really thick loopy sort of consistency you would get out of the tub when you would get those types of paints. To be honest I know these are called two thin coats but if you wanted to you could probably do it in like one coat if you wanted to. These paints cover that well in my opinion. So moving on now I wanted to have a look at some of the skin tones within the set and there's some really interesting ones in the wave 2 ones you don't just have your standard kind of boring kd of flesh which you would normally get with like games workshop paints or other brands you get some interesting other colors and you even get like an arc hide as well i know you can make your own flesh tones but it's always good to have the convenience of a pre-mixed one when you want to paint up something quickly or have a base to start off with and i'm just starting off with the Uri's flesh here Premixed skin tones aren't always the best, they don't always look that realistic and can be a little bit too cartoonish. I think Scale 75 have one of the best ranges when it comes to skin tones and different shades of that and with a bit more realism. However, I do really like the tone of this. It has more of a realistic quality to it than some of the other flesh tone brands that I've worked with in the past. And again, the consistency of it is very nice. It's still the same as the other two paints which I've used so far. I personally think this is one of the best pre-mixed flesh tones that I've worked with straight out of the bottle. Really, really nice Caucasian flesh tone. Has some realism to it and it's not too pale as some of them that I've worked with before. It's a nice basis to work off from. Or you could probably simply put this down and then just put a wash over the top of it. Moving on from the flesh tones, there are some washes in this set which I wanted to try out some of. And I don't always use washes on my miniatures, maybe if I'm like speed painting some things, but I tend to find that most washes have like a residue left over, they can stain your models and they don't look as good as they could do. And I usually just thin down like normal acrylic paint and add that to the recesses or I thin down contrast paints from Citadel which I actually prefer using. So I'm trying out one of the blue washes straight out of the pot here and I'm not adding any water to it. So these paints have a nice consistency to them, they're not separating at all. And I'm just going to put it over the blue which I've put down previously. So this blue wash actually reminds me more of a contrast paint. It's quite thick, but the colour to it is consistent. It's not any separation to it, and I'm finding it's not staining as much as some of the Citadel washes do. I would probably advise adding some more water to this if you wanted to try and get a more transparent consistency to it, because it is more like an ink wash it is quite intense which is impressive and i do think it's very cool and i've seen this across the board with these washes which i've used off camera as well 
moving on now, I'm going to be trying out some metallics. Um, these are true metallic paints, and these types of paints aren't always the best. Especially, you know, the Games Workshop Citadel range of metallics. I'm not a huge fan of those paints. I don't think they cover that well and tend to separate. And in my opinion, the best ones on the market are the Dark Star Molten Metal ones. They have such a good consistency to them and have a great vibrancy and range of paints. So I've grabbed the Platinum Crown here, shook it up a little bit and I've added it to my palette. It has a nice consistency to it, it's not separated and is similar to the other paints which I've used from this range in this video. And I'm just adding a little bit of water to it, um, sticking it straight on the same model I used before to see how it covers. So straight away after one coat, this paint just pops. It's really nice and it actually looks like it's been dipped in sort of silver chrome almost. I wanted to test out another paint from the metallics just to make sure and I grabbed the copper from the Wave 2 set and I just tried this out and again I was really impressed with this, it had a nice consistency to it, it covered really well and it has like a nice pop to it. I have to say these are some of the best true metallic metal paints I've worked with of any range. I still personally like Dark Star Molten Metals the best, but they do specialise in metallic paints, so they know what they're doing and they are kind of like a niche within a niche, but these are worth picking up anyway. I think these two thin coat ones, especially that platinum colour, it just pops really well. Probably my favourite thing about this range is the fact that there are glazes and Games Workshop used to sell glazes but stopped doing them and I can't think of that many ranges which sell pre-done glazes like this. So it's cool to have these pre-done glazes, it saves you some time when you're having to mix some yourself. I actually like glazing but if you're new to it and you're a bit apprehensive how to get them right these paints could actually save you some time and give you some more confidence. Glazes have a bunch of different applications to them, so you can help blend the transitions together on like robes like I've done on this model, or when you want to add some like source lighting like on the candles on that model, or if you want to kind of add some hints and variations on skin tones like I've done on this bust. Glazing is also really cool when it comes to underpainting, it's worth looking up the technique of underpainting but in its most simplest form you probably know it as slap chop. This is where you would add a contrast of black and white and then put a glaze over the top of that so you get the highest contrast and you can speed up your painting but it goes beyond that as well which I won't talk about too much in this video as I'm talking more about this paint brands rather than techniques. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing a red glaze and I'm trying it over the top of that black and white part to see how it covers. So even though on the palette it seems quite a thick opaque paint, it is quite translucent and it's thinner than the washes. As I said before, if you're learning to glaze and you're new with it, this can really help you get the right consistency or just cut out some time otherwise. Sorry about the waffle and glazes, but I thought it was important to give you some context to what they are and the usefulness of their applications, because I think it's one of the main things I did enjoy about this range, the fact that they actually have some pre-done ones. These glazes were lovely, they all had a similar consistency, they were translucent, it didn't have any separation. Now that I've used most of the types of paints within this range in Wave 2, I also wanted to talk about this additional sheet which this set came with and one thing I really do like about this range is the fact that it compares it with other popular brands so from Citadel and Army Painter whereas it makes it a lot easier to follow along with like the Duncan Rhodes tutorials and also I really like the fact that these paints address the thing called triads. A triad of paints is a very simple way of breaking down a colour into its shadows and its highlights with the colours within its same hue. And this isn't something unique to this brand, you know, it's something that's in art anyway, but it's cool that they're addressing it and it makes it easier for newer painters or if you just want to quickly paint something up and see what colours might be 
or harmonious and useful to you to use. Another important factor as well with this information and the paints within the choices in this range are neutral tones. Neutral tones like greys and browns are very important because we don't want to overwhelm a model too much and have too many vibrant colours. So it's important to have these sort of subtones to create some more interesting variation and nuance within our painting. So now I've gone through like all the technicality of these paints and tested them out, what is my opinion over all of them? So after testing the paints out and giving you some theory on them, what do I think of them overall? I do think this is a fantastic set of paints. Obviously a lot of thought and care and research has gone into these and it is Duncan Rhodes after all who is a professional miniature painter. There's some really great vibrant colours like that ray gun one and I was really impressed by the flesh tones, they feel more realistic than some of the other brands I've used. The metallics are lovely, they cover well and don't separate. I was impressed by the washes. Again, these don't separate. I don't feel like they stain the same as the Sistel ones. And they're actually quite thick and remind me like more of a contrast paint and you can thin them down. And like I said, I was really impressed by the fact it actually included glazes in this range. It's so cool to see those again. The lid design's cool because you won't be wasting as much paint. Uh, perhaps that might be a little bit of a downside if you're working with larger scale miniatures. However, these feel like they have been tailored more towards like your 28-32mm ones. Perhaps it might be a bit of a hindrance if you'll be working with a large army, as I feel like these paints are quite expensive for what you get. Painting miniatures is more about the experience that you learn in the skill set rather than like any cheat codes to it. And I still think you can create amazing stuff with Vallejo. You know, those award-winning painters that just use Vallejo in like Citadel. However, I do think these paints would enhance your experience of painting. They would make it a bit easier and maybe a bit funner. I think this is one of the best overall ranges I've worked with in terms of like I said the glazes and the washes and the consistencies of the paints across the board. I think like I said, a lot of work has gone into these. I do think it's worth picking up a couple of these just to test out, you know, if you have the budget for them. I think they are very nice. So I hope this has given you some insight into this paint range. Thank you for watching. I do have a Patreon and you can donate if you would like to support my channel. Otherwise, please do share this. Remember to enjoy your hobbies for yourself. Respect that people enjoy them in their own ways. And at the end of the day, they're just war dollies. I will hopefully see you in the next one.